the Lebanese diaspora is so successful in so many parts of the world. Now, we've seen estimates that as many as 15 to 20 million people of Lebanese descent live outside the country. Even though there's only 4 million people in Lebanon, go almost anywhere and you'll find countless success stories. It is the pattern that we've seen Lebanese immigrants succeed in various places from uh, Brazil and South America to all over the United States, to Australia, to Senegal and many other locations. And the question is, why do they succeed much more abroad than they do in, in their homeland? Simply because the circumstances in Lebanon are not as conducive to success. If you look at our history and you look at how many times Little Lebanon has been conquered, how many times it's been leveled. The difficulties in almost every generation of having to adapt to a lack of resources inside the country. The tradition and the DNA had been to reach outside of the country. They would go, they would adapt, and they would make it happen with this kind of entrepreneurial thrust. The first phase in the history of immigration from Lebanon happened towards the last quarter of the 19th century. And this is because of the crisis that the uh, silk industry was facing in Lebanon. In 1883, a young single man named William Abraham emigrated from southern Lebanon to the United States. He was an itinerant peddler. Uh, he prospered. Uh, Pretty soon his brother and his brother's wife came and then other relatives and other families. And by the time I was growing up in Waterville, there were approximately 300 families. My grandfather came with nothing and yet he decided to go into retail grocery. And first with a fruit cart, then with a fruit stand, then with a couple of fruit stands and eventually built himself a, a business because he wanted to be his own boss. I think it is part of the Lebanese culture to be competitive, to have uh, very good instincts with respect to running businesses and, and, uh, and, and to being entrepreneurs. We grew up with not only being told you should learn a foreign language, but specifically you should look to the outside world. And I think that's a very important aspect of our culture, I would say, that is that the Lebanon is very dependent upon reaching out to the world, about exploring the world. During our first year medical school, the Civil War erupted. There was no choice in Lebanon but to leave. So I came on a plane. I remember very well that flight. I cried. I knew somehow that that was going to be an end of something that I loved so much. We got really toughened up uh, during that war. I had no choice but to put in my mind that I was going to become successful, otherwise why leave? It was just the beginning of the era of gene hunting to find human disease genes. I was able to join the lab of a very distinguished scientist and get trained in the area of gene cloning, molecular biology. I'm a uh, physicist. I'm very interested in galaxies, how they evolve, how stars form and how the universe gets to look the way it is today. Humanity gives us more than the will to climb a mountain. It instills in us the desire to reach the summit and the imagination to see the colors of the horizon beyond. Success has to be an end product or a natural product of being the better version of ourselves. I give uh, a lot of the, uh, the credit for my uh, success to those values that my parents passed on to me, that I've tried to pass on to my children, uh, and those are the values that I think are very widely shared among people whose families uh, at some point uh, had Lebanese origins. 
I feel that the values that are picked up in Lebanon are values that are universal values. Faith, family, country, uh, work hard, uh, and never complain. My mom's philosophy was very simple. If you start something, you finish it. Integrity, honesty, trust. Curiosity, resilience, and generosity. There's always been that drive of looking for opportunities while at the same time never cutting uh, the ties back to where we came from. I think it really is a shared journey of emigration, of overcoming adversity, of having to make it, or sometimes having no choice but to make it. A lot of people, they leave Lebanon, their families leave Lebanon because there's a bigger place. And sometimes that's the problem with being Lebanese, is that you want the biggest opportunity to change the world. And I think it's why people leave Lebanon and change the world. Good morning, Mr. President. Who, who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Charles Elashi, the director of JPL, and we have a room full of the mission operation uh, personnel. Uh, uh, this is Curiosity Mission Operation on Mars. Our special guest is Carlos Slim. Mr. Slim is a dear friend, a self-made entrepreneur. He's been named Forbes magazine, richest man in the world, fourth year in a row. You were born Mazyad Yaqub. Yes, sir. Mazyad Yaqub. Now, when we put K so the so Westerners can at least pronounce it. As you know, my dad founded St. Jude Children's Research Hospital 53 years ago where my father grew up, the son of poor immigrant Lebanese parents. I'm very grateful to the Academy. I'm very honored to be here. I think a lot of Lebanese have contributed at a global level, at a worldwide level, that is to be commended, to be proud of, and to be celebrated. I think what's surprising to many people is the number of successful immigrants that got out of Lebanon and that are Lebanese, given how small the country is. What uh, Lebanese immigrants are doing virtually on every continent is important and uh, will continue to be uh, a key part of uh, economic uh, success in the world and key part of government, key part of culture. There's a multitude of great Lebanese achievers in in every industry, every artistic endeavor, every branch of, of medicine and science. I think that for a long time, uh, there was a sense that there is no diaspora, and this, you know that we just assimilate, and generation after generation we were kind of disconnected. But I'm finding that recently, uh, uh, maybe in the last few years or a decade, there's a kind of awareness that we are a diaspora, and that we, if we only connected, uh, we could be quite powerful. The role for all of us who are Lebanese is to keep the vision of that Lebanese dream alive. How do you do it? You, you do it by connecting people. This is the first time that the diaspora is coming together, building these common bonds, supporting each other. The role of the diaspora is really to become an aspirational force for the Lebanese, the younger Lebanese in the diaspora, to move up those ranks and have role models. I think the more we can find ways to inspire young people, uh, in Lebanon or those who have immigrated from Lebanon to do the best they can do every day and to show them that if you are to do that, you will be successful. That's the best thing the Lebanese diaspora can do. The narrative needs to change from the country and its troubles to the people and their achievements and what they have done on a world scale. And I think that's a gift. That's a gift today, the, the, the power of of Lebanon today, in my opinion, lies more outside of the geographic region of Lebanon and sits in the hearts of the 20 million or so diaspora that are outside. That's Lebanon.